Anyway, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find an estimate for the mean and the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of a sample means for a quality control situations. In this particular example, I am going to show you how to use the TI-84 to help you find all of those values. Okay, so what we have here is a quality control manager has taken four samples with five observation each of the diameter of a specific part. Each diameter is measured in inches. And the following table shows the finding of the quality control manager. So what we have here are the individual inches for each individual measurement of each of the parts from the samples. Some of them have more variability than others, where some of them are a little bit closer together. So what we are going to do is when you are finding an estimate for the sample mean, you have to start with the mean of each individual sample. So if you were doing this by hand, you would use the formula where you take the sum of each individual sample and divide it by the number in the sample. That's what the XIJ stands for. So what we are going to do is we're going to use the calculator to find each of our sample means. So I'm going to grab my calculator, show you where to go to put them in, and then I'll pause it for a second so you don't have to see me entering in all of the data because it does take a little bit of time. So if you grab your calculator, um, the first place that you're going to go is to stat and edit. And make sure that you have L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. If you accidentally delete one of these, let me just show you what happens. So notice I just deleted L1 and now it's gone. So if you ever accidentally do that, what you're going to do is you're going to hit stat and setup editor, option five, and then enter. It'll say done. And what that will do is it will just bring back your L1. So if you accidentally delete one of your lists, that's how you get it back. So in L1, I'm going to put the sample means for the first one. And so it was 5, 5.3. So you just enter it in and then hit enter. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, enter in the rest of the data. So I'm going to go through and put all of the rest of this in. And then you can do the same thing. You can pause and then start once you have all of the data in. All right, I have finished entering all of the data in. So notice that what I did was I just put sample one in L1, sample two in L2, sample three in L3, and sample four in L4. So I've separated out all my samples and I have gone through and verified that all of the numbers match up. So always check that all of the numbers in here match all of the numbers in here because if you enter anything in incorrectly, you will get the wrong answer. So now what I'm going to do is in L5, I'm going to put all of the individual sample means. So I'm going to find the mean of L1, the mean of L2, the mean of L3, the mean of L4 as individual values in L5. And L5 is just going to represent all of the sample means. Okay. Um, and then I will go back and write all of the answers down on my screen. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to hit second and stat above it it says lists and we're going to go over to math and we're going to choose the mean so that was second stat where it says list and then arrow over to where it says math and then we're going to choose option three the mean and i want to do the mean of l1 so i'm going to do second and the number one and then hit enter and it will automatically plug the value into here Okay, in the TI-84, it doesn't store the formula like it does in the TI-Inspire. So if you change anything over here, you do have to come back and retype in the value. It won't automatically change it for you. All right, so for the second one, we want this one to be the mean of the second sample. So I want to find the mean of this one. So I'm going to do the same thing. Second, list, math, mean, option three. And for this one, I want to find the mean of L2. So the second number is going to be the mean of L2. And then we want to find the mean of L3. So we're going to do the same thing. Second stat over to math, option three. And for this one, we're going to do second and the number three for L3. Th um, three. And then for the last one, we're going to hit second list, arrow over to math, option three, the mean. And this time we're going to find second L4. Okay, so the 5.02 is the mean of the first sample. 5.08 is the mean of the second sample. 
5.16 is the mean of the third, and the fourth is 5.12. I do have a video that shows you how to do all the work with hand calculations. Um, I will put a link to that in here, so if you need that, you can, if you need to show work, you can watch that video. So this one is 5.02 inches, 5.08 inches, 5.16, and the mean of the last one is 5.12. So all of those I got directly from plugging in the mean into here. And the reason I put it into a list is because it makes it easier for the next part. So the next part that we're going to do is we're going to compute an estimate for the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So we're gonna find um, an estimate because we don't know the population mean and we don't know the population standard deviation. Remember that the central limit theorem says that the more um, that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means approaches the mean of the population and the standard deviation of the sample sampling distribution will approach the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. In this case, we don't know the population mean and we don't know the population standard deviation. So we are going to do estimates of those values. So what we are going to do is for this one, the X bar bar, we are going to find the mean and the standard deviation of our L5. So basically the formula for this says is to find the sum of each of my individual samples from one to the last one where M is the number of samples taken and divide it by the number of samples that you have. So if you were doing hand calculations, you would just add up these values and divide by four since we took four samples. But like I said, I'm going to use the calculator to find both of these. Um, the standard deviation is much easier to do in your calculator than hand calculations because it will just automatically do it for you. But it's important to understand what your calculator is doing. So sigma x bar is equal to the sum of the deviation squared for each individual sample mean minus the mean of the sample means. So basically, if you were doing hand calculations, you would take each of these values here, subtract the mean that you find here, square each of those values, and then divide by it. M, and then take the square root. The variance is just as squared. If you had to find the variance, you would just square whatever value you get here. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna use the calculator to help me find these two answers so that I don't have to do out all the work. I do have a video that shows all the work, so I will put a link to that, like I said earlier. Okay, so let's grab our calculator. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the calculator screen. So I'm gonna quit out of here. I'm just gonna hit second in the mode button. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit stat and go over to calculate and I'm gonna choose option one. So again, that was stat and calculate option one. My list that I put it in, remember that we are going to find the mean and the standard deviation of L5 because L5 is where we put our, our sample means. Okay, um, the frequency list, we want this to be blank if this screen doesn't come up for you, I'll show you in just a second what it should look like. So if you have like an older TI-84 or you have a TI-83, um, I will show you what that looks like in just one second. And then we're going to hit calculate. Okay. Um, so like I said, if you have an older calculator, I'll talk about the numbers that we're going to look at in just a second. But I know that some of you guys have older calculators where that screen doesn't come up with the list. You would just put in one of our stats. And then... I'm gonna just delete this. We would just do second L5, and then that tells me that I want the one var stats of L5. And now if I hit enter, it gives me the same thing that I had from doing the prompting. Okay, so the two things that we wanna look at is the mean of the sample means, which is the 5.095. So my X bar bar would be 5.095, and it's said to round to four places. So in this case, I would add an extra zero because sometimes they're very specific about that. If they don't care, you could just leave it as the 5.095 because that is an exact answer. For the second one, um, what we are going to do is we are going to look at the population standard deviation, the sigma x. So you as the human have to know all of the notation that you're supposed to use. So like in this one, it doesn't automatically change it to x bar bar like we had written down. And this doesn't put it as sigma x bar. So you have to know which symbols to write on paper. That's very, very important in statistics. So 0 0.0517 is what we would put here. 
and the calculator just instantly did it for us. So the mean of this, an estimate for the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means is 5.095 inches, and an estimate for the standard deviation of the sample means is 0.0517. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like to see, please let me know that as well. And if you get a chance, please subscribe.